Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Sorry for the volume of C64 videos recently. Um, well, I shouldn't be apologising. I love the C64, but anyway, uh, yeah, I can imagine if you don't watch my channel for the Commodore stuff, um, you know, you might not be best pleased at the volume of Commodore 64 videos. But anyway, I thought I, I just want to point this out to you. It's something that I found, uh, you know, I think it's quite interesting, really. It might help a few people out. The Nano Swinsid, if you watch my first video when I did a sort of initial review of this, there was a few issues with some games, things like R-Type, where the sound was very granular. Um, if you look back at that video and just you know fast forward to the R type bit, you'll see what I mean or hear what I mean. Um, really, it's, it does break up quite considerably. And the same thing happened in Alien. The sound in Alien was awful, and that convinced me that there was perhaps you know a, a bug somewhere in the uh, you know the, the firmware on this uh, micro controller here um, that was responsible. But since I started playing around with the chip select, you know caps on the chip select here to get it working with you know dual SID boards and to get it working with alternative PLAs and things. I've noticed actually that a cap fixes the problem with R type. So I'm just speculating actually that when Swinkles developed it, he might have done most of his testing outside, you know, out of situ, outside of the C64. He may well have had it connected up to a PC or some other device that was simulating a 6502, um, you know, to feed the SID. Uh, he may well have been just running it in simulation level and, you know, through an emulator or something. I don't know. Um, and when he's come to implement it in the C64, yeah, for 97% for of things sound perfect, so you wouldn't pick up on it. But, yeah, adding a cap, now, and this is the thing I'm not too sure about, I've got a 10 picofarad cap in here, but because I'm using it with the dual SID board, so 10 picofarad might be too much um, on its own. If you just plug in a nano SID nano straight into your SID socket, you might need something smaller, like a 2 picofarad or... 5 picofarads or something, you know, 4.7 picofarads, something like that. But I'm just going to demonstrate R type to you now, just so you can hear that it's flawless. It's absolutely flawless and alien as well. So, what I'm going to do here is I'll have the volume quite loud and I'm going to disconnect the individual sound channels because I've got dual SID running in here at the moment, just so you can hear. Now, I'll start the game. That's just F1, one player. I'll start the game. And I'll disconnect the, the, the individual SIDs until we get to just the Nano on its own. And you can have a listen. Um, and you should be able to tell um, that there's no breakup or granulation in that sound at all. So. Right, so that is quite loud. Just start the game. That's the Nano. I'll just turn it up a bit. Can you hear there's no break up at all? Let's swap back to the other side, the 6581. Yeah, so the 6581 is much louder. Go back to the Nano, and I'll just leave the Nano connected on its own. And I'll just play a little bit of this. There's no granulation there whatsoever. Wow, who knew? Who knew that a cap was what was required on the Nano Swinson? That's amazing. I'm astonished, really, because that's totally changed my impressions of the Nano Swinson. What I said in that review there about it being 99% perfect is wrong. Actually, I would, you know, I changed that. I retract my comment. It's pretty much 100% perfect. This is as good as the emulation that's built into the 1541-2 Ultimate. So, um, yeah, I mean, I've just ordered, on the back of this, I've ordered two more Nano Swinsids because I think they're brilliant, absolutely brilliant. We'll load Alien now, because I'm sure, if you watched my previous review, you'll be interested to see how Alien sounds now that I've solved the issue, you know, by adding this cap. Okay, so we've got Alien loading here, and it doesn't take very long. There you go, straight in. Turn it up. Now that's using the Nano. Now obviously the filters are missing, so you're not as good as a bread bit. But the important thing is, there's no distortion. Now swap back to the SID. Uh, sorry, 6581 SID. Yeah, so you get a lot more bass than actual 6581. It's a bit more grumbly. 
we'll switch back to the Nano. Yeah, so the filtering is not as good, we know that. We know that the, the Nano filtering ain't anywhere near as good as an actual SID. But there is no distortion. There's none of that crackling and growling sort of noises that was experienced when I first tested this without a cap. There's the two together. Anyway, I thought you'd find that interesting. It's uh, amazing, really, how one thing can lead you on to something else. Had it not been for Dave's um, dual SID board here, I wouldn't have been experimenting with the Nano Swin SID in the second slot and encountered the issues with the capacitance required there. And it's the same with the PLA, because that was where it all started, really. It was Dave's substitute PLA. So I'm very grateful for you know the, the series of events that happened there that were all sort of invoked by Dave, really. Uh, thanks again, Dave. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.